Hello, I've just started playing around with custom Bokka in Blender. For those of you that may not know, Bokka describes the balls of light that come from very sort of uh, small point lights, defocused and captured with a large sensor camera uh, and usually a wide aperture lens. In a previous video I made, I covered how this effect can be created in your compositing app of choice. However, with new modern path tracing renderers like Cycles uh, and a nice GPU or GPUs, the same effect can be produced in camera, so to speak. Um, one of the main benefits of doing this is you don't really have to worry about transparency or semi-opaque materials that would normally cause issues when using the defocus and post method as you are reliant on a depth map. Yesterday I posted a tweet with two examples, um, A with a custom bocker and B without a custom bocker, and the majority of people thought that A looked more real, um, seemingly because of the extra level of imperfection. Um, although I will accept that a lot of the people that answered were from a creative background, so that may be slightly biased, but nonetheless it assured me that the effect had some merit at least. It could also be handy for VFX work, where uh, a director of photography has chosen a particular characterful lens that has strong chromatic fringing or a particular texture to the bokeh balls. So how do we go about creating this effect? Uh, I'm going to use Blender and Cycles, but I'm pretty sure this concept would apply to any other uh, renderer or package that uses path tracing. Uh, the bokeh effect is best seen on uh, small, very bright light sources. Um, as you can see here, the smaller we get, the harder the edge of the Bokka ball. Uh, so for example, I'm using a group of hanging light bulbs uh, with tiny little spherical lights uh, in the background to enhance the effect. For the camera, we're going to set up a slightly longer focal length, a bit more telephoto, as real world wide angle lenses rarely have particularly shallow depth of field unless you're very very close to the subject. Okay let's frame up our camera nicely and create an empty and we're going to use that to uh, reference our depth of field and start playing around with the look. Now we need to do the complex task of modeling a box. So shift A, mesh, cube, done. This will be our new camera aperture or iris. Uh, one other thing we need to do is just jump into the UV layout and make sure that the outward facing poly occupies the entire UV space. Now let's parent our box to our camera so they can move in unison. Uh, I'm using Photoshop here but you could use any other design application, even Blender directly or shine a small light down a camera lens to capture the bokeh directly for VFX work or matching defocused elements. So here I've just created a 1 by 1k image and I'm going to start creating the transparency map that we're going to use to let the light into the camera. As we can see from references, um, there is no such thing as a perfect lens. Uh, there'll often be a bit of color fringing, little specks of dust, and maybe the occasional hair. Um, and most uh, most show a slightly brighter halo around the bokeh ball itself, uh, perhaps due to the lens elements or maybe even catching the light on the aperture blades. So let's put in those details. I found I found you can be pretty clumsy while adding elements as faint details tend not to show up all that well. Okay, with all that done, let's export a PNG and jump back into Blender. Okay, let's fire up our nodes, import the image, add a transparency shader and plug everything together. You may need to play around with the size of the box a little bit uh, and the aperture of the camera settings to get the desired result. Um, to add a bit of color fringing we can shift some of the color channels around by duplicating our texture, adding two color, ramp blah, 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 adding two color ramps, one for red and one for everything but red, and then add them together and offset one ever so slightly with the texture coordinate node. After a bit of tinkering we're ready to render um, get ready for some seriously long render times as we have to throw quite a few samples at this to get to 
to get to a clean bokka effect. Uh, that being said, in Blender 2.81, there is the new Intel AI denoiser, which does a pretty impressive job at clearing up uh, renders, noisy renders at relatively low samples. And that's about it, really. Um, the difference is subtle, but I still think it adds something nice. Uh, if you want to look at any more tutorials, I have more on this channel. Um, and I constantly put things up on Twitter as well, at, at Louis Dumont. Thanks for watching.